Hello dear friends. I hope you're all doing great. In this video, you will learn how to create classic tween, shape tween, and motion tween in Adobe Animate. As you know, to create motion, we first need to create a shape on our document. I right-click on the shape section, select the oval tool, click to create a circle, and then hold down the left click and drag. I also hold down the shift key to create a perfect circle. I use the selection tool to select it and place it here. Now I go to frame 30 and click here. You can see that above frame 30 it shows 1 second, meaning the animation I'm creating will be 1 second long. If I want it to be longer, I go to 2 seconds which is 60 frames and click here, then press F5 or I can go to insert frame to create the frames. If you've seen the previous lessons, you know that to create motion we first need to create frames. So, you see that from start to finish my shape remains in this area. Now, if I right-click on this gray area, there are three options at the top. Create Classic Tween, Create Motion Tween, and Create Shape Tween. We use Create Classic Tween for simple animations, Create Motion Tween for more complex animations, and Create Shape Tween for morphing one shape into another. Now, at the beginning, I choose Create Classic Tween, which essentially creates the in-between frames for us. If I click on it, it gives me a message saying you first need to convert your shape into a symbol. In the previous lesson, I explained how to create a symbol in detail. So, I will cancel here and press Ctrl plus Z to go back to the previous state. I click on my shape with the free transform tool, then right-click and choose Convert to Symbol, or you can press F8. When I click here, the symbol window opens, and I confirm it in graphic mode. Now I click on 2 seconds or 60 frames, again press Insert Frame, Right-click on the gray area where the frames are. And this time, if I choose Create Classic Tween, you can see that the frames turn purple. The purple color indicates that we have now selected the Classic Tween mode. I place the slider at the end, like this, and I can press F6 or choose Insert Keyframe here to create a keyframe. Additionally, if you right-click, you can choose Convert to Keyframe instead. Now you can see that a keyframe has been created at the last frame. So, wherever we place the slider and press insert keyframe, a keyframe will be created. Now that we've created the keyframe with the transform tool, I can select my shape and by holding down the shift key, move it forward. I hold down the shift key to ensure the movement stays straight. This way, you see a simple motion is created for me with constant speed. Why do I mention speed? because in the upcoming lessons, you will learn that we can animate shapes with different accelerations. Now I'll play the animation, and you'll see how it's displayed. If I, for example, click on frame 20 and press insert keyframe, another keyframe is created. Now I can position my shape wherever I want. For instance, I'll select it with the free transform tool and place it at the bottom. I move forward to frame 40, and this way I can create another keyframe. You can see the keyframe points here. I select my shape again and move it upward. Now, if I press play, you can see my shape moves like this. I'll also enable the loop option so the animation repeats continuously. Let me extend this and play it again so the loop keeps repeating. I'll stop it here. So, friends, this was a simple model of animation where we first need to create frames, and whenever we want to add a new motion throughout the frames, we press the Add Keyframe option and create the desired motion. Now, if I want to delete all these keyframes and frames, I press Ctrl plus Alt plus A to select all of them, or I can right-click here and choose Select All Frames. If I click on it, all frames and keyframes will be selected. You can then click Remove Frames to delete all frames and shapes. Now, if I want to create a new shape again, I need to create a frame first and then create a new shape. I move to frame 60, click here, and press Insert Keyframe to create a new keyframe. But because now I want to select the Motion Tween option, I will only create the frames. So you can see I haven't created any keyframes yet. I right-click here and this time select Create Motion Tween. 
A window pops up, asking to convert the shape into a symbol. If I press OK, the shape gets converted into a symbol. As you can see, I haven't created any new keyframe yet. At the end, I can move here, select the free transform tool, and easily move my shape. You can see that a keyframe is automatically created and my animation is made. However, friends, another difference with this option compared to the other modes is that it shows the path of the ball's motion using these points. There's a line with a series of points showing us the ball's path in motion tween mode. Now, you may ask, what's the use of this line? In the next lessons, I'll explain these points and lines in detail. But if I select it here with the selection tool and drag it down, you'll see that the mouse cursor changes. First, click on the artboard or document to deselect the shape. You'll see that now the mouse cursor has changed. I hold down the left click and drag it downward. You'll see that the ball's motion path has now changed. And if I press play, you'll see that the ball moves along this curved path. Again, wherever I place the slider, I can use the free transform tool to reposition my shape. This way, you'll see the circle's motion path has changed again. At frame 40, I move the shape downward. Another keyframe is automatically created for me. Now I'll press play. I'll also enable the loop tool so the animation keeps repeating. You'll see that the shape moves along this path. Remember, the further apart the points are, the faster the ball will move. If I bring the shape further down, you'll see that the distance between the points has increased, which means the circle speed has increased here. Notice that you can see here how the speed increases. In the next lesson, we will fully cover different types of acceleration for objects, and you'll learn them in detail. For now, I just wanted to introduce the concept and prepare you for the next lesson. Now I will disable the loop function. Once again, I press Ctrl plus Alt plus A. All frames and keyframes will be selected, and then I press Remove Frames to delete them all. Next, I'll create a new frame. I right-click on the shape, and this time I select the Rectangle tool and create a rectangle. Again, I go to frame 60, create a keyframe, right-click here, and choose Create Shape Tween. If you click on it, you'll notice that the color of the frames turns brown, and in this mode, we no longer need to convert our shape into a symbol. Now, I move to the end of the frame, select my shape using the free transform tool, and hold down shift to move it straight forward. This way, you can see how we quickly and simply created this animation. But now, I want to transform this rectangle into a circle. To do this, I go to the last frame, select my shape using the free transform tool, and delete it. Now, I select the oval tool and draw a circle. I select the circle and position it here. So, what happens now? I'll enable the loop as well. In the last frame, let me change the color of the shape as well. This way, you'll see that we can animate the color too. Instead of red, I'll choose blue for the circle. Now, I go to the beginning and press play. You'll see the rectangle transforms like this and turns into a circle. If I stop the motion here, you'll notice that by the end of the animation, the rectangle has transformed into a circle, and even the color of the shape has changed from red to blue. So, we not only animated the shape, but also animated the color of the shape. Once again, if I right-click here, you'll see various options. I mentioned Insert Frame earlier. There's also the Remove Frame option here. You can also choose Insert Blank Frame, which is available here, and you can copy any frame you want. For example, if I create a keyframe here, right-click, select Copy Frames, and then come over here, click, and choose Paste Frames, The shape will pause at this point before continuing its path. Why does this happen? Because I copied this frame here. If I press play, you'll notice a pause before the animation continues. I don't want to go into more details in this lesson now, but over time, as you work on different projects, you will get to know all these options and learn them thoroughly. 
These were all the things I wanted to teach you about different types of motion. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Goodbye for now.